Well, well we could no, we could probably kind of start introducing okay. our topic and stuff. We'll probably have some people okay shuffling in. Okay. Um, well, the first thing I want to know is I, I'm in in a in a little bit different studio today because my my uh, regular I'm out of town, so I'm I I have my portable studio today. So I'm just wondering, how's the sound quality for you guys? Is it are you here okay? Yeah, it seems good. No echo tinning or something like that. I mean, I know I won't sound like Barry White today, but you know, just, just. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so today we have a very interesting subject, and um, it's one that I think I'm hoping that everybody will have some kind of input, you know, uh, because I'm gonna guess that almost everybody has or have had a neighbor. And, you know, this idea about dealing with our neighbors, um, it's of course not new, you know? I mean, it wasn't that the, the story is, uh, somebody asked Christ even once, like, who is my neighbor, you know? And it's that kind, those kind of things that we're going to try to uh, engage with today, because I think in many cases, our neighbors are the second tier to our inter inner relationships with other humans after our families, assuming that we have we live with family. And so they're the people, you know, sometimes it's work, you know. Uh, but often people, the kind of work people do, they may say hi and goodbye to their workmates, but they're just kind of there. They, they might do one or two things with them. But my observation is a lot of times uh, those relationships are superfluous. You know, somebody has already designed what you're supposed to do with those people. They may even have rules about what you can and can't do with those people. So I kind of put that to the side for this discussion. Um, and it lifts up neighbors, you know, neighbors are the people that we share a fence with or a wall, you know, and sometimes the walls are pretty thin, you know, and, and, and places where people have those thin walls, there are all kinds of mental and emotional barriers that we need to put up to cope with the fact that we have thin walls and we have neighbors just on the other side of those walls. If we live in apartment buildings, we are uh, very likely to at least once a day, sometimes more, interact with those neighbors in the hallway. We may open a door or hold a door open for them. Uh, and as relationships get more entwined, uh, you may share things, you know, your kids may play together, your wives may, and husbands may do things together. So from that, you build something we can loosely re refer to as community. And we, those relationships that we, that we build, they form the kind of structure, if you will, for our reality vis-a-vis -vis people or as, as concerns people. And a lot of how we feel as a result, a lot of how we feel during the day has to do with our relationships with our neighbors. So I think that, that you know, exploring this idea of, of our neighbors and how we relate to them is something that we can all benefit from. So I'm hoping that we can get, we, we have a, a, at this point anyway, a smaller group today. So I'm hoping that everybody will feel uh, that they have something to contribute to this. Because unlike some of the other subjects that, that we cover here, where the, the um, let's say the, the effort is aimed at introducing new, ideas or different ideas or ideas in a different way. This, I hope, 
will be something more of a low hanging fruit uh, kind of, of uh, discussion. So I'm hoping everybody can feel uh, a little more, let's say competent. Cause sometimes I feel like people actually, they know stuff, but they feel like, well, I don't know, maybe my thing isn't, I don't really know th about that. But I think most people have experienced neighbors. So we're gonna go with that today. So our first question is, what is a neighbor? Because I always like to define terms. And as long as that's a central term in this discussion, it seems like the thing that we should uh, clear up is what each person has as an idea of what is a neighbor? What does that mean to you? Anybody? Everybody. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll call it a neighbor <clears throat> is someone alive and breathing who's in close proximity to me, mm. whether it be my house or when I'm off for a walk. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll have more later. Okay. Neighbor is somebody in close proximity to me and to you, uh, uh, preferably alive. <laughs> You're assuming that they're, that they're alive. Uh, okay, <clears throat> great, great. Thank you for that, Cheryl. Todd? Yeah, and I think what Cheryl said, you know, one thing that I think of definition of that and like your border, because you always think about like what distance from my house or whatever. Of course, you think of people right next to you, but the walk thing is absolutely true. Because when you go out and you're kind of on, you see, like, if you walk, you know, standard paths or whatever in your neighborhood, people you see regularly, you consider them like, oh, yeah, they live by me or they're my neighbor. You'll talk to them. You probably know them a little better than someone you just, if you hit the, like the jogging path or something, because you'll stop eventually because you'll see them repeatedly. It's someone that you see more than just, you know, once or twice. And usually that is like if you're out outside of your car or outside, you know, like physically in a shared space with them, kind of, even, even if it's outdoors. Mm -hmm. Well, that does bring up a very interesting uh, uh, angle to this idea of neighbors. Uh, it brings in time, you know, the, the, not only the timing, like when do you see them morning, noon or night, but it also brings in time, like, how much time do you spend with that person? For example, a person may live on the other end of a park. So physically, in terms of housing, they may not be all that close to you. But if you're, let's like, say, jogging in the park and you're always jogging about the same time and then you just sort of like by habit, you started jogging with them, there's a certain connection that you have that kind of makes it feel neighborly anyway. You know, you may not even know exactly where that person's house is. You know, they, you, you may never even discover that because it's not important. But even if you see each other all the time and just greet each other or something like that, it becomes a familiar part of your, the backdrop of your life, you know? And it's those kind of things that end up being very important to us. They give us a kind of anchor points you know, during a day, you know, you, especially if you have, if you're a routine type person, you know, and, and, and you go through the day, let's say you go on a run through the park and every day you see, you know, you can almost set your watch by when you will meet that person on the trail. And then suddenly you don't see them for one day and then two days, and then three days. And then Somehow something can be missing if you've been doing that for, let's say, three months or more. You know, you use, you know, the brain gets that pattern after three months. So it's something after that, you start noticing that something's missing. And it feels like, it can anyway, feel like something, that some kind of loss thing happens in the brain. Anyone else, we're, at, we're exploring at this point for you, for the folks who just joined us in the last five minutes or so, we are exploring what 
we're, we're, we're going to be talking about neighbors in general, but at this point, we're looking at what do you call a neighbor? How do you define a neighbor? Good morning. Good morning, Naima. Won't you be my neighbor? <laughs> I think that um, that that's kind of looking at him putting his sweater and, and shoes on. Mm. He says a lot. Won't you be my neighbor? Who you, who you mean, like uh, Mr. Rogers? Yes, sir, Mr. Oh, Rogers. Mr. Rogers, yeah. Yeah, because... Um, I think that in his way, he was expanding our reach of kin, mm. our reach of a reach of or reach to kin, because we are all one. And um, I think that he expressed it in a way that everybody, well, everybody knew the song I was singing. So therefore, won't you be my neighbor? means a lot. I mean, he was extending a hand to China, Japan, to, to everybody. And I think that has to do with how we now look at neighbors. You can be my neighbor down the street. Um, the Prophet some had a situation where there was a woman that always emptied her stuff out the window and it was hitting him all the time. And uh, the story goes that uh, one day she didn't do that and he went in to check on her. And that was because he knew that there was something wrong because it didn't happen. Yeah. Yeah. And um, that's, a, that's all a part of uh, Neighborly, the yeah. Facebook and, and all of the internet, that, that's part of being neighborly. We do the same thing when somebody hasn't posted for a while. I have it happen because I, I do other things or I forget or whatever. Well, Naima, how you doing? Oh, I'm fine, why do you ask? Well, I haven't seen you for a while. This is a woman in France. Mm. So uh, it's the people who are connected to you. And I would say they're connected to you whether you know it or not. Mm -hmm. I'm done. Well, thank you. Thank you, that's, that's a very, uh, useful insight, uh, and you brought up a couple of very important points, especially the 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 reference to let's say Facebook, uh, because that's a way that uh, I don't know if you call them neighbors, you know, because they are not let's say the proximity is different in terms of how we usually think of what is a, what a neighbor is, <clears throat> but certainly it's community. And often com community is, is uh, kind of our first experience in building community is with our neighbors, you know, people who do, who for whatever reason, we see them often and recognize the benefit in inter interacting with them. Anyone else? Because I think all of these, the, the, the different uh, aspects, uh, helps us to see neighbors in lots of different ways. So, so it's, uh, I'm very interested in getting other people's take on what they think is a, um, is a neighbor. What do you call a neighbor? I think of neighbors as living within a few blocks of myself. Hmm. So this has caused me to think I have a good friend that lives about eight blocks away, but I don't consider her a neighbor. Hmm. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Excellent. What, yeah. where, where is the point that, that for you, she would become a neighbor? Because I mean, she lives on the same planet. So somewhere between wherever she is, and where, where you are, there's a kind of a, a let's say, a, an imaginary concentric circle that she would become over that line, which she becomes a neighbor. Well, where's that line for you? Um, 
I don't know that she would ever be my neighbor because friend means so much more than neighbor. You can't have both. They can't be both. It could, but friend says more to me than neighbor does. Okay. Okay. But if you were to isolate neighbor, you know, just think of her as a neighbor. Mm -hmm. At what point would she, you know, she would remain your friend. But like you say, well, I don't think of her as a neighbor because she don't live near me. Uh, so I'm taking geography is important to your definition of the neighbor. So yes. where, where, if she started to move her house, if she put her house on a truck and started <laughs> and started rolling it in your direction, where would she? At what point could she stop and you say, "Oh, now you're my neighbor"? She'd have to be within three blocks of me. Within three blocks. Okay, that's that's what I was looking for. Is there something? about that space, the three block space, that for you turns that person, whoever they are, whether they're your friend or not, you know, something in the three block space, is there something that somehow turns the person into a neighbor that you can identify? I guess I'd have to think back to my growing up years on the farm. And so uh, neighbors on the farm but you'd be, uh, again, the how far away or how close they were would depend on if they were a neighbor. Even if they weren't friends, they'd be neighbors. Well, I'm going to guess if you, grew, if you grew up on a farm, that they were going to, they could be a lot further than three, three blocks. Exactly. <laughs> yes, you're right. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. I think they're, at three blocks on the farm, they become an irritant. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they could live several miles away and still be neighbors. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, in a way, I guess what I'm, I'm getting at, Carolyn, is uh, the, the idea that actually a neighbor, even though it's geographical, it could float around depending on how you feel about the person. Would, it, would, would, would that reflect how you feel about that? No, I don't think that enters in how I would mm. view them as a person. No. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. Well, give me a little bit more then about what, how, what are the elements for you that turn the person into a neighbor? Because the, the, the geographical one seems to be kind of a floating target. Right. In, in one case, they're far away and they are a neighbor. In another case, they're much closer, but you're thinking, well, that's not really my neighbor. So oh, you're making me think way too hard. So I'm gonna pass on that one. Somebody else can answer. It. <laughs> okay, okay, fair enough, fair enough. But I'll jump you know, in. Um, but, I, okay. I'm thinking yeah, yeah, go ahead, Shelly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I definitely think that neighbor for me, there's that proximity. Um, and and kind of like, I, th I think what she was referring to, right, that proximity. So in the farm community, that proximity gets much larger because there's less residents in the space. So the distance increases, um, but still their neighbors. So when I think about myself, I live here in Brookings and we lived, we moved into a, um, about two years ago, three years ago, we moved into a brand new neighborhood mm -hmm. and we were like the fourth house there. And now there's probably uh, 40 houses maybe. Right. Um, I would say my neighbors are on my block, mm. right? Uh, within, uh, you know, my sight lines uh, when I come and go, basically. Mm. And I will say exactly what she was saying. I could have a neighbor who maybe is not my friend or somebody maybe I disagree with or something, but I'd still call them neighbor. Um, I don't put any connotation on that. Uh, positively or negatively neighbor to me is just more about that that proximity and I think it has to do with the common experience of living in that space right and so like I said my sight lines coming and going and kind of the when the recycling goes out and the garbage gets picked up and kind of issues that you might have right now we're having issues with barn swallows so we talk to our neighbors about the barn swallows attacking our front doors um, but yeah I don't put anything in there in terms of like if they're friends or not friends they're still neighbors mm -hmm. so there's my thoughts those are those are very good thoughts Shelley. very good thoughts and it brings up uh, uh, some uh, important points 
that is worthwhile reflecting on as we think about who is our neighbor. And that is, it's not only physical proximity, but it's also the frequency in which we are likely to interact with that person, right? Also, you brought another very good point to this discussion, and that is, if you live in a certain geographical area, era, area, you're faced with certain problems that are unique to that geographical area, a la barn swallows, you know? Um, and so you have an advantage as social animals to work together to deal with that, whereas any one of you probably would have a harder time dealing with that thing. And so that's, you know, those things are important to think about in terms of like how you develop community. And it gets to a very important point is our interconnectivity and what kinds of things interconnect us. And, and to me, it at least for me, thinking about those things and testing them out in a way, you know, with just how I interact with people, it informs me a lot about how I feel about people and how I develop, uh, let's say, relating to one person or, uh, but not to another, not like and dislike, but just uh, the relationship. So there's time, there's there's activities like things we're likely to work on together, the opportunity. And and as Carolyn, Carolyn uh, so well put it, you know, like the geographical part is important. So I guess that's why we have this large prefrontal cortex thing going on. It's because all of those complexities jump into the <laughs> jump into how we 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 view people differently based on a kind of abstract combinations of those kinds of things. And we have not exhausted them yet. You know, we, there are many more. But I think so far, this gives us some kind of baseline to think, oh, this thing is not like really simple, like, oh, my neighbor, and then just call it a name. It's important, I think, to think about, well, why is this person a neighbor and that one isn't? Because then that gives, that gives form to our thoughts. And then we can go on and think other kinds of thoughts. So um, that said, uh, my next question really goes to um, how do you go about meeting your neighbors? Um, and, and I'm going to, to use a kind of a hypothetical in this case and say, okay, you move into a new place. Maybe you change apartments you move to a new neighborhood or you're in your neighborhood and someone else moves into your neighborhood. How do you get to know your neighbors? I'd like to address that because sure. I live in a place where I've lived for 40 years, mm. but the houses that are close to me, mm. uh, they're not always occupied by the same people. In fact, the house to my, uh, as I sit to my right, that changes every fall mm. and every summer because it's a house full of students from Carleton College. <laughs> okay, the house on my left is occupied, has two apartments, so it's occupied for people who have been there for at least two years. Yeah. So we're doing pretty good yeah. keeping those neighbors. And the house that's to the back of me across the driveway uh, has recently changed. And so except for the students, I didn't approach them. What I did so that I would be connected with the semi-permanent people was I made little note cards with my name, my phone number, and, and uh, my email address so that we would be connected. 
mm. mostly for my benefit so that if I need anything or I need to contact them, it's easy to do. Would you please respond to me mm. with your names? Because I didn't know all the names, your names, your phone number, and your email address. Well, two of the two of them responded that way. One did not. Um, and so there have been times now I can say, okay, I'm going to be out of town for a week because I want somebody to know that I'm gone. Uh, just to be aware. If you want to use my garbage can, I'll leave it out. If you don't need it, I'll put it in the garage. So anyway, that's that's what my neighborhood is like. And I kind of limit my neighbors to those people around me, but I agree that they can be a couple of blocks away too, because mm -hmm. they're people you do see often. Mm -hmm. Okay. So so if I'm understanding you right, Cheryl, when you say you limit them, you what you mean is the the, the interactivity with them. Right. Okay. The garbage cans, the gardens. Uh, whatever they're doing, whatever I'm doing. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to know a little bit about these people. Mm -hmm. Now, the students have been great this year. This is the best bunch of students we've ever had. Mm -hmm. In fact, they had a big party last night. They're mm -hmm. graduating. They, have, they deserve to celebrate. Mm -hmm. But anything after midnight really upsets us. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and so... Um, my husband went out and talked to them about 1130. Mm. And they were very cordial. They said, if you hear any fuss after 12 o'clock, it's us getting these people out of here. Mm. So, you know, you win some, lose some. There have been some really bad years <laughs> mm, mm, mm. where police assistance has been necessary. <laughs> 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 or, or strap grenades on your vest. Well, I, do. I really want to keep <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh. There, there, are, there are many different ways, but but I, I like your idea of of uh, you know giving them some information. Here's my contact information, and I would like contact information from you. Okay, interesting, interesting. Shelley, you look like you had something you wanted to say. Yeah, I appreciate Cheryl's comments. Those are really good. Um, I do think that people think less about the importance of kind of making those connections like Cheryl's doing with the in case I'm out of town or watching each other's place and those types of things. And I don't I, I wonder if that has a little bit to do with people are are connecting with people much more you know, if it's virtual or th there isn't as much need for the the physical connection to the next door neighbor or the guy across the street, because we can sit in our house and connect with people all around the world. And so I wonder if that's made it, you know, where our neighborhoods aren't as Im important to us as they used to be, um, because we have access uh, to all of those other ways to connect with people uh, I mean, it used to be that it cost money if you wanted to make a long distance phone call, right? So <laughs> you needed to talk to the people in your neighborhood because that, that was the cheaper cheaper way, way to go about it. And I, I just think um, for us moving into this new area and I try and when I see people outside introduce myself, but I will, I'll be honest, like if they don't reciprocate very well that first, first time, I don't probably, you know, it, that kind of deters me, you know, like if they don't seem very interested in being neighborly then at, after that first interaction. So just some random thoughts that I'm having based on what Cheryl was saying. Thank you. So I, I, I'm taking it then that, that you're not likely to stalk your neighbors. Well, prob probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I noticed when they, if their cars are like parking in front of my mailbox and, that, <laughs> and that's becoming an issue, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, well, that's it's it's interesting. Um, okay, we'll we'll get, we'll get we'll we'll get. There's some things you brought up there that I, if if I address them now, we may go off on a tangent before we exhaust this kind of idea. So I want to stick with this uh, for a little while anyway, a little while more. Anyone else? How you get to know your neighbors? That uh, Todd? Yeah, I just you know something interesting about that. I was been talking about it like. Um, 
one thing I noticed because you're talking about times, like so people now are less likely to do some certain things. And one thing, my neighborhood in Rapid City, when I when I'm back there, I have a couple of neighbors who I know better because they're older and they were retired and or they were working part time and they at, at in the evening they would take their um, lawn chairs and put them out in the driveway and sit in the driveway. <laughs> now that's something that that's a way to meet your neighbors. I mean, you know, you're going to probably talk to them. I was more likely to talk to them, but it's also something that you don't see now as often. Mm -hmm. You know, that was actually a practice. You know, it was always common to see people on their porches, front porches, not back porches. Now you're more likely to see people on their back porches. They'll you know, have friends over. It's kind of cloistered off and you know, you're less likely to have interference or whatever. From other people but it was very common uh i can remember when i was younger and, and it was just interesting a generational it's not something you see anymore and even houses are built differently mm -hmm. than they were at one time you, you know big front porches were a big thing you know and now it's like oh look at that nice house it has a nice big front porch but it used to be almost all houses had some kind of front porch <laughs> and it's just not the case anymore which is just interesting timing wise that's one way though they met neighbors pretty effectively and they became really well known and they got to know people around them. It's just to kind of physically be there for an hour or two, you know, throughout the, particularly in the summer, obviously not so much in the winter, but. Mm -hmm. Very good points, very good points. I, 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 as you're saying that, I reflect on the, the house that I, I live in in Roslyn when I, it had, I, well, I was gonna say it, it technically still does. I just covered them up. But it has this huge glass porch, and my reaction to you know like to to that porch was, you know, if you had put this glass on the south side of this house instead of the north side, you would have had a solarium. And putting if you put some black tiles down, you wouldn't have had to pay for winter heat. If you put it on the wrong side, you dummies. You know, but <laughs> but. In real life, in, in real time, I'm the dummy because of what was important to them was that summertime interaction with their neighbors. There were people could sit down and they could see from that glass porch. And this was an add-on. It wasn't, you can tell it was not part of the original house. So they purposely put that add-on on the house. And they put it on, and I could tell by the construction uh, uh, materials, et cetera, they put it on before they added an inside bathroom, right? So that was, that's, that, when you think about it, that's deep. That it looked to be about 10, could be 15 years before they had put that uh, front porch that expanded the whole front part of the house. And it was all glass, you know? So you could see that. So that was the thing too. I was thinking, you know, in the wintertime, glass, <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, it's going to be cold and drafty and the caulk's going to dry. I mean, I was doing all the physics, but they were doing the more important stuff. They were doing the human stuff. They had the human calculation and they did what they needed to do for that human calculation. And uh, I suppose if you didn't have TV, that was pretty entertaining. You know, because I know that there are times that I feel I could just get a, a chair and some popcorn and I could have a show anytime in Roslyn, you know, just sort of sitting around and just watching people go through whatever they're doing every day. <laughs> and it would be quite interesting. But yeah, that's so that, that, those are very good points. They're very good point. Todd. Any, anyone else ways that you, you know, that you see uh, introducing yourself to people, uh, getting a neighbor a neighborly relationship started. The other techniques. Well, while you're thinking about it, and please do keep thinking about it, if you come up with something, you know, jump in. Um, there used to be something, and I'm pretty sure there still uh, exist in places, called a welcome wagon. And people would like, uh, oh, Cheryl, you're a welcome wagoner? Uh, I so, was. I was. Oh, okay. But it's not really a neighbor thing. It's, um, oh. it's a business. Oh, yeah. But, but it's the a business. company. Yeah. But, 
in, in our neighborhood anyway, the welcome wagon, it was introduced by a business, but we just, we just pirated their idea. Okay. Right. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't buy anything right. from them. We just took so the concept. I, no, I just worked for the business for a year. Oh, you did? Then, oh, okay. Yeah. Tell, tell us a little bit about what the business model was around that. I think that's... Um, well, as, as a representative, you were obligated to engage businesses to provide a product in exchange, oh. a fee in advertising. Mm -hmm. And um, and then it was also your job to try and figure out who was new in the community, which wasn't always easy because, um, you know, you would suspect realtors and stuff would be interested. They're not. <laughs> They're just interested in 6%. That's all right. <laughs> so... So, but I, I did that for a while. It was, it was um, wonderful in a way. It was um, a lot of work and I had a lot of stuff, you know, because of all the little things that go into the welcome wagon basket. Um, I had, you know, I had to collect that from, from the businesses and I had to store it somewhere. So it's, it's like I was an outlet from my house. Mm. Um, and it was interesting in the way of uh, observation, mm -hmm. the way uh, you were accepted or not. Uh, who, yeah. who was accepted or not, Cheryl? Uh, the, the deliverer. Okay. Mm -hmm. That um, I had one woman who was extremely upset that I ever called her. <laughs> and um and then there were there were others who were just thrilled to see somebody mm. you know mm. and and to have to have a few presents you know a few gifts from the businesses and, and so that gave them a reason to go and and uh do something with the businesses to to pick up a comb or or, or what have you mm. um but um, then I went off to graduate school, and when I came back, I said, "Nah, I've had enough of this." <laughs> it was fun. It was fun in a way. It was frustrating in some ways too. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, that's that was that's my welcome wagon story, and okay. I should have written it all down. And you know, I should have, but I didn't. You you did. You should have what? I should have written it all down, but I didn't. Oh, no, so. you didn't write it down. You did a great job. Great job. <laughs> you know, it, you, but I, I was I was a little bit, uh, you know, extra intrigued by, you know, you mentioning that there was at least one person who, like, they didn't really appreciate the fact that you were trying to get to know them. You know, they probably thought, well, this person, especially if you say something like Dar Don Carleone sends his regards, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 you know, I guess some people have different reasons that they move to places. And, and I can remember, you know, speaking of neighbors, sometimes I grew up in a city uh, and this was before the internet, you know, and so we, we didn't have internet or anything like that. But even then I can remember that one of the people would often say, well, in the city, people don't know their neighbors. To which most of us re would respond, that's why we live here, is because we don't want to know our neighbors. You know, we want to know people across because the neighbors are always coming in, getting in your business, you know. <laughs> so, so we'll, we'll get to that in a moment, but I can, I, it, your, your comment, Cheryl, about the lady who didn't really appreciate it, you know, being sort of introduced and, you know, saying, hey, you know, uh, you know, we're here and welcome to the community. Right. Yeah, some people don't respect, but some people don't really want that. Uh, she didn't. And she was upset that I got her name somewhere. Yes, right. That, right. Found, uh, that I found her. That's right. Uh, she was rampant about it. She yelled at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the FBI told me nobody was going to know. <laughs> <laughs> but, but she... She worked for the news, the local newspaper. 
she had she had come to be editor or something for a time and you would think you know i don't know it, 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 she just didn't fit the part but that was okay yeah i never called her back I yeah. Yeah. you know you have you respect whatever yeah whatever people, people want. want yeah and yeah. if they want you to come you know some would say oh yeah how soon can you come exactly yeah. It, uh, and so, you know, there were very interesting, mm -hmm. and nice sides to the, to the job. It, yes. It just, it just was like having the welcome wagon storied your house. With <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 At, at some point it could be, uh, as overwhelming. Well, yeah. uh, the, the welcome wagon, as we practiced it was something where we would People would the, the neighbors would donate different things. Uh, I mean, the businesses could, but we didn't really we didn't really hustle the business. It was a neighbor to neighbor thing, and sometimes it was just like some vegetables or you know some popcorn, probably stuff they'd never use. You know, like the Christmas presents you get. You know, but you you but you but you you it's more like well we care about you or we want to get to know you or sometimes people would have a little party, you know, and they would invite that person to just say, hey, you know, we're going to have a party in your honor as a new, as a new neighbor, would you come when we have this party? Because I mean, after all, the party is for you. But if you don't come, we'll have an effigy of you, you know, that will sit up in the chair. <laughs> and, and then we'll talk about you, <laughs> you know, while you're not there. Uh, but yeah, it was something, it was something like that, you know. So uh before we move on to the next thing, anybody else have any other ways to get to know your neighbor? No? Okay. So I think uh in this last 15 minutes or so, I want to uh, uh skip what I had in mind for a question and go to how do you develop and keep good relationships with your neighbors? And I know some people, it's even become an axiom in some way that, you know, good fences make good neighbors. I, I'm not a subscriber to that idea because I have not seen that work. Uh, it sounds good for people who, who are antisocial, you know, but it's not, I haven't, you know, but that aside, I mean, maybe some people will find that work for them. It never worked for me. Uh, uh, in fact, in Roslyn, we have almost no fences, and I find that that makes good neighbors. And we don't. And sometimes I have a feeling we don't really know where property lines are. You know, it's just because it's not a. It's kind of like not a thing. You know. Uh, in fact, I remember asking my neighbor, "Are those your trees or my trees?" You know, if I want to cut them down, I, you know, like somebody else moves in here, I don't even know. You know, if I can if I could cut it, you know, cut a branch off, you know, even though it's over my property line, but I, I don't know if I should like go and say, hey, you mind if I cut your tree down? <laughs> so, uh, I mean, that's how fenceless we are. But uh, what, do, what do you, what are the kind of things that you find that uh, help you to develop and keep good relationships with your neighbors. Um, Go ahead. I'm, this is Lee, and I came in late, mm. really late. Well, you're really um, always on time, Lee. <laughs> well, the reason I'm saying that, um, my husband passed away. So say that again. My husband just died, and I just. Oh, no. Oh, Lee. And it's oh. been a trip that you can't believe. And I know what the topic is, and I did not tell you what a neighborhood I have. And we have 72 units in it. Mm. And the overwhelming neighborhood, I think they could paint a city. Mm. Um, the thing that they have done through the years have just been unbelievable and the, the things that they have planned getting back to what you are doing now and discussing how do you keep that 
neighborhood. Mm. You com- you move into the neighborhood. People clamor to come into the neighborhood because of the reputation about the fun, warm, accepting neighborhood. Mm. Having said that, no one interferes with your privacy if you want to be alone. That's understood. But our planned getting together is Tuesdays and Thursdays, we have happy hour. You can bring water, any drinks you want, lemonade, or et cetera, from 4.30 to 5.30. And it started on somebody's driveway. It continues today. Wow. And then it goes in the clubhouse in the wintertime. Only one hour. Mm. And people come if you can, if you can't, you know what they feel. We have a social once a month of potluck or bringing pizza, whatever's decided. Once a month, every Monday is coffee for men. Mm. They bring their own treat, serve their own coffee, clean it up in the clubhouse. Tuesday is women's. So we have these organizations. Mm. If you're sitting outside in your driveway, you will have guests. I have found out when I have wine on my deck, it is filled with people in a short time sometimes. But they'll just say now, they'll come and they said. Would you prefer to be alone or would you like some company today? Because they know what I've gone through. Mm. And I can say without any hurt feelings, I'm just kind of playing it silent today. Otherwise, I've got people in homes back of me that come over because they know it's open to anybody. And little by little, I would say everybody pretty much knows everybody. And it's the most friendly, welcoming, accepting neighborhood you can imagine. Mm -hmm. And you have all, there are working people. It isn't for retirement people. You have working people. You have grandchildren that are being cared for there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. We have the city... Uh, oh, it's uh, retired people with musicians. They have a band. We have them come out and perform, and then we serve brats for anybody that wants it, brats and things. Yep. So having said that, that has kept that neighborhood in a very loving and caring neighborhood. I'm done. Thank you. That's a, that's a very good... Um, almost like Mr. Rogers, you know, kind of thing. People care about each other. You know, people, you know, it's like people care for, people caring for each other. Very yeah. good. Anyone else, other, other uh, tactics that people use to uh, develop uh, a relationship with their neighbors and, and, and to uh, maintain it? I could tell you why we moved here. Oh, go ahead. Well, we were looking for Opie after the young ladies thought that they had bumped into us and they're, oh my God, oh, I'm so sorry, because they were so polite. Mm. And then um, we were looking at White, South Dakota. And we're just driving along and, and uh, Harold Hildebrand was on his moor and he raised his hand to say howdy. Mm. And so we asked him about the neighborhood and he was explaining how how wonderful it was and we were looking to getting a place outside of white and Mm -hmm. because he and his wife uh talked to us for a couple of hours and told us how wonderful it was we moved to white Mm -hmm. and we moved to that place outside of white and the first time that it got really cold and it was really really bad they came to make sure that we were okay. They came mm-hmm. to check on us because uh, if we were in Alaska, we would be Chichacos, in other words, the new folks. So yeah. they, they came to check on us. Yeah. And 
that was part, we were part of their neighborhood. We sort of got adopted. Okay. And I think that, that that has everything to do with it. You know, it, that's why when I say Mr. Rogers and the opening up of, of everything is, is fabulous. And Lee, uh, you know, anybody would be running around trying to be next to her because she's, she's just <laughs> open. Remember the time she was chasing the garbage men to tell them how great they were? I mean, come on. You know, you, you, you get around people that are like you and then as you go with them you find people that aren't like you and they become your neighbors and then that's when you get that whole world view mm. so yeah that's what got us here we okay. stayed because of a, a wave and a care mm, mm, mm. excellent anyone else have uh, a, a way that they uh find to uh develop and maintain neighborly relationships. Todd? Yeah, you know, here, one thing that I know that has been very common because we live in a pretty multicultural uh, community is that food is the universal mm. uh, sign of neighborliness. And so, uh like so during christmas we would bring you know christmas treats when we would prepare for the party to our our neighbors and then of course during uh eid then our neighbors often bring us you know um you know eid foods uh sweets and stuff like that and it, and it seems to be pretty universal because we've got we've been here 10 and a half years and We've probably had about seven neighbors because uh, we live in a townhouse, so we have two people on each side, and that it, it, it is you know it's virtually universal and multicultural because food crosses a, you know across language and, and across cultural kind of uh, uncomfortablenesses or lack of knowledge. It's like food says, "Hey, neighbor." And it does because you know there's nothing you don't uh, it says, you know, I think part of it is just you know, I care kind of or you know, you're part of part of the neighborhood. This is this is the way I can include you in kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good point. And 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 I think uh, the point that you make about the food is one that uh, deserves underscoring. Uh, because when you don't know anything else about a person, you know, you know that they have to eat. They may not like to eat what you have, but they you know that they have to eat. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know, in other words, a person may be a diabetic and you may be bringing candy bars, but, you know, there's a there's a reasonable chance that they eat something. Right. Water is another one. You know, in, in many places, uh, people offer you water as a kind of a, a, a just almost like a handshake. Uh, restaurants for years would just bring you water at the table is to say, I acknowledge you. You know, I acknowledge your presence. And here's something that even if you don't drink the water, I can look at you and tell that at some point you do drink water. You know, that's a, that, that is a reasonable assumption to make that you just looking at you, I know that, you know, I can ask all kinds of things you know, about your religion and all kinds of your education and stuff, but I know that you need water. And unlike the food, it's not like, well, which flavor do you like? You know, you can just have the water and then you know that, they, you know, they might like some flavored water, but, you know, you know that the bear, the thing is they need it. So those are the kinds of things I think that that gets to the question of like, well, what kind of things can you do to establish um, uh, that you want to be neighborly, you know, and to develop that relationship? And I think it starts with what are the known things? that people need and even if they have an adequate amount of it they still need it and you're offering it to them uh you're offering it to them makes uh you know shows a sign that you recognize them and then you can as you yeah i am 
<laughs> uh, uh, it, it, offering offering it to them just says, "Hey, I I I see you," and that's important in in, in establishing a, re a relationship with people. And then after that, you can start to. It's it's one of those kind of things that you lower the barrier of stress for that person about who is this new person that's coming into my life, you know, or, and, and along those same lines, when you see something that another person in your neighborhood, you think they might need something, you know, you can, you can say, Hey, I saw your, uh, you know, your, your, uh, when you went on vacation last time, your flowers were, looked like they were kind of like, were missing you. You, would you like me to water them the next time? you know, or something like that. They probably, they may not want you to do that, but the fact that you offered, you know, uh, it, it really puts person, a person like, well, how can you be, how can you, you know, like just sort of diss a person who says, hey, it looks like you needed some help. And, you know, I didn't want to just do it, but if you need me to do that, I'd be willing to help you out in that way. You know, it's not, it's not a big thing because I'm watering my lawn just to, you know, throw some on yours is not a big deal, you know. That means something to people, you know, or if you say, for example, hey, your kid goes to the same school as mine. I can pick your kid up after school if you want, you know, because, I, you know, or something like that. I mean, I think you get the drift. Uh, saying something, noticing, let's say, for example, that somebody's truck or car has an oil leak and just say, hey, did you know your car had a had an oil leak? You know, I, I, I noticed it leaked on my driveway. You know, <laughs> so, uh, but you know, just just uh, letting people know that the little things like that, letting them know that you care, they often mean more than some big heroic thing. You know, uh, so uh, that said, we're we're kind of getting to the end of our our uh, hour. I hope that this will uh, stimulate some thinking about how. First, what do you think about a neighbor? Who is your neighbor? And what makes them your neighbor? And then two, how do you develop those relationships with your neighbors and see if you can come up with some creative ways to interact with your neighbors because amazingly, they work, they'll probably work with other people who are not your neighbors as well. You know. um, I'll take this opportunity uh, to give a shameless plug to a, a, an event that we're having tomorrow at Fawick Park, for any of you who are in that area. Uh, we're gonna do Uplifting Voices of Unity. It's a, a uh, um, concert with a chamber orchestra. We'll have uh, dancing, uh, not disco dancing, just kind of like uh, various cultural dance and modern dancing. Uh, we'll have some dancers there. All of these, these people are professional dancers, by the way, and professional people. They, the, the people in this orchestra, they actually play for the Sioux Falls Symphony, you know, but they've created this, this uh, uh, chamber orchestra. So you can be, you know, like enjoy that music. And I'm going to be doing some, uh, some poetry as will some other uh, African immigrants, uh, kids actually, who they'll have some uh, poetry. And the, and the uh, chamber orchestra is actually going to play a couple of my compositions. So I'm uh, really happy to uh, see how other people uh, interpret my music. <laughs> so at any rate, that's, uh, that's the, the show for today. I hope that you will join us next week and, you know, and uh, invite your friends. Uh, and uh, we'll see you next week on the same time, same station.